Hello learners, Namaste. Welcome back to the second lecture of this module where we were actually looking into workers participation management. Today specifically we will look into the degree and the forms of labor participation. I am Dr. Abraham Sir I am an assistant professor at the School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. Now when you look into workers participation, we have tried to emphasize on the need of the same. We have tried to look into the evolution, the timeline of workers participation, what do you actually mean by workers participation, how it effectively uh, gathers momentum and how it actually empowers the employee and it also empowers the employer, it also gives a productive or efficient outcome to what was otherwise in, a, in a, a totally inefficient system. So all these aspects we have browsed through. Now we look into something which is related to the different types, the different degrees and different forms of labor for participation. When you look into labor participation, let us understand the concept in from a different angle altogether today. When you look into labor participation, you see that labor participation refers to the active involvement of individuals. Now we do not have any doubt in stating this active involvement part of individuals in the workforce. We do understand that when there is active involvement of the individuals in the workforce or in productive activities, it encompasses various forms of employment and economic engagement. Now this is more critical. Once you are talking about the worker participation or the labor participation specifically, we understand, we do understand that there is employee engagement. But something which is more relevant and something which needs a proper attention here is economic engagement. When you talk about economic engagement, this is beyond just an individual unitary analysis. Let us understand it from a holistic basis. Let us understand this from the economy as such. Now, what happens when there is collective, uh, you know, ownership coming from one factory that will be good for that particular uh, factory or good for that particular organization or company. Now, if that collective ownership is reciprocated across the different organizations, different companies within a territory, the territory will itself come up. Now, what happens if the entire state has such an ecosystem, a business ecosystem where the thriving happens with certain interdependency, everybody is into, you know, helping each other, everybody is into worker participation, everybody Everybody in, is into you know bringing a collective decision making every time they are bringing out a decision. So all these aspects literally creates high performing state. Now this couple of states together it forms a region and finally the country itself. If you look into specifically Indian scenario we see that some of the states are having better ease of doing business. Some of the states are having, uh, you know, a better work culture when it comes to the business angle. So why is that? That some states lack there and some states are having uh, some sort of deficiency there, whereas some states which belong to the same country perform better. So one reason could be that there is labor participation which is effective and this actually leads to not only employee engagement, it also leads leads to economic engagement. More people are coming into the system where they have a say. More people are happy in remaining in the system where they have a say. Now this is the logic why you need to have a proper informed decision making body. This is the reason why you need to have the lowest of the lowest labor who is doing the actual work should have a seat in the table where the decision making is done because he or she will be proficient enough to look into it from his angle or her angle. This is something which is very vital when it comes to economic engagement. Now when you look into the significance, we understand that labor participation is crucial for policy making. It is crucial for economic planning and addressing societal needs. Now it impacts productivity, there is no doubt about it. It impacts income distribution. It has its own ramifications with respect to the social dynamics of uh, the, the entire country or the economy. It would also contribute to the economic growth, 
poverty reduction and obviously the gender equality. Now, this is what the significance is. If you look into uh, you know the entire statements, you are talked about productivity. We have discussed that. Income distribution because more the number of people are being made into or uh, you know invoked into the decision making, there will be more of equity. There will be more of uh, equality when it comes to actual distribution of the resources. Now, there will be a key uh, shift in the social dynamics because there were times when only a few were selected towards the, the top hierarchy. Now, that time has gone. When you are looking into active labor participation, when you are talking about the dynamics of you know, active worker participation, the social dynamics is different. There is hardly any hierarchy in place. There will be equal amount of sense of ownership as well as sense of responsibility coming from each level. So, please note, not only the sense of ownership, the Effective labor participation actually brings in the sense of responsibility too. This, this particularly, this particularly contributes to the economic growth. It contributes to the economic growth or in other words, it works towards the reduction of poverty. And finally, if you look into uh, non-discriminatory practices that are followed as part of the labor participation concept, you do not need to go anywhere to find justification in understanding the fact that it is also tantamount to increasing the gender equality. Now, let us quickly look into some of the statistical measures. When you look into labor participation rates, they are typically calculated using data on employed, data about unemployed and economically inactive populations. Now, what basically happens is that it provides insights into the proportion of individuals actively contributing to the economy and the labor market. So, you get a typical idea about what is the ratio, what is the number what is the actual quantum of the workforce which actually contributes to the labor market, to the, to the entire market of labor. So, this is what the statistical measure signifies. Now, when you look into or when you try to understand, when you attempt to understand labor participation, you have to understand the concept, you have to understand the significance and not to forget the statistical measures clearly guide us towards a clear understanding of the labor market. Now, when you look into the forms of labor participation, this is one of the key essence of the, the lecture also. When you look into the different forms of labor participation, we have typically different types of forms, types involved or having uh, a say in, in labor participation. The first one is obviously work council. What do you mean by work council? A formal group representing workers that actually discusses and negotiates with management on work related issues. Now, certainly something which is relevant is with management on work related issues. It could be based on, you know, something like working conditions, it could be something like employee welfare and even to a certain extent organizational changes. So, what we have seen uh, with respect to the outside world is that work council are common in the European countries and provide a platform for labor representation. If you look into uh, the Disputes Act, if you recollect the lecture of the Industrial Disputes Act 1947, every single establishment employing 100 or more workers is required to constitute a work committee. We have looked into it to a certain extent in that particular lecture. Please revise that. Such a committee the work council, such a committee, consists of equal number of representatives of employers and workers. So, the main purpose of works committee is to provide measures for securing and preserving amity and good relations between employer and employee. So, if there is one significant reason, one significant reason I want to underscore the relevance of work council, I will categorically state that it is to preserve amity and good relations between the employer and employees. When you look into the employee ownership, the second form, typical form of labor participation involving workers in the ownership and financial success of the company through share ownership. It could be through profit sharing. It could be through employee stock ownership plans. So, this form of participation whereby you are giving maybe a partnership, a shared ownership, maybe profit sharing or some sort of employee stock ownership plans. This form of participation actually aligns employees' interest with company performance. Now, please note, 
there is a slight modification from the strategic intent. The strategic intent I was trying to emphasize in the previous lectures was when there is alignment of employees interest with the company's interest or the company's objectives. Here it is more of the alignment of employees interest with the company's performance. Now this is also critical because if the employees interests are not in alignment, not in agreement with company's performance, then the company would not survive longer. This method, particularly the employee ownership method, refers to the complete control of management by workers through an elected board and workers council. You know, if you want uh, example, the system was there in Yugoslavia. So in this system, actually what happened is that two different sets of people perform two district managerial and operative functions. So though workers have the option of influencing the decisions taken at the top level, yet in actual practice, the board and the top management team assume a really independent role in taking the major policy decisions for the enterprise. Now this is what makes the employee ownership significant. Now let's look into the third form which is job enrichment. When you talk about job enrichment, empowering employees by expanding their job roles to include a wide array of tasks, a wide array of responsibilities and decision making authority. So job enrichment aims to enhance the employee motivation, engagement and satisfaction. So people who have already covered the OB course, they would have a better idea of what you mean by job enrichment, which is distinct and different from job enlargement. But even you're talking about job enrichment, you have to understand that job enrichment categorically aims to enhance employee motivation, engagement and satisfaction. You feel that you are more into the job. You feel that you are more happy and satisfied with the job because this is what you're carved out for. This is what you're made for. You get a feeling like that, then there is nobody's going to stop you. So this is what uh, the, the different forms of labor participation is all about. Now, when you look into other typical forms of labor participation, we have something called as collective bargaining. We have categorically, systematically and comprehensively covered collective bargaining in our previous lecture. So, I do not need to go into a deeper uh, you know, discussion on collective bargaining. You can look into the previous modules where we have extensively, as I already mentioned, covered collective bargaining. But what is of greater importance is that to understand that collective bargaining is done periodically or on a continuing basis between the management and workers representatives on issues over which the interests of both parties are competitive. It could be issues like wage rates, it could be issues like bonus rates, it could be something like working hours and number of holidays. So the agreements arrived at are normally binding on both the parties. Now this is vital when it comes to collective bargaining. The system of collective bargaining itself, if you look deeper into this, depends on the principle of balance of power. Now, when you talk about balance of power, both the, the stakeholders, employers and employees do have differing opinion, do, do have always conflicting cases. So, this is where the balance of power is vital. Managements and the unions representing the workers are regarded as two separate power blocks that jointly negotiate the varied terms of employment with each other. So this is what I would like to discuss here with respect to collective bargaining. We have understood what collective bargaining is holistically but in this level we have to understand that collective bargaining as a form of labor participation underscores the relevance and the criticality of the balance of power. Another important form of labor participation, the fifth one would be Joint Management Council, JMCs. We look into Joint Management Councils. These are joint bodies consisting of the representatives of management and employees. The functions of JMCs typically may range from decision making on some issues to simply advising the management as consultative bodies. So what we understand here is that the decisions of these joint management councils specifically are advisory in nature. 
please make a note of that this is more of a advisory uh, suggestion uh, suggestive you know uh, decisions that are coming in but i i cannot use the word decisions uh, opinions or advisory the decisions of these councils are essentially advisory in nature through employers often implement the unanimous decisions of them this is how actually the jmc is operate so working conditions it could be uh, accident it could be prevention it could be indiscipline it could be cases of absenteeism or training are the important typical matters uh, always before joint management council i repeat it, this is not an exhaustive list but, but please do understand that typical aspects like working conditions typical aspects or typical cases of accidents typical uh, preventive cases in discipline or cases of absenteeism or training are essentially the important matters before joint council now when you are looking into another uh, you know form of labor participation you will understand the relevance of board level the basic function of the board is to ensure that the growth of enterprise capital that is the critical function no doubt about it if there are workers representative in the board if there is workers representative in the board the capital formation and growth will be definitely of secondary importance to him so his preoccupation in this case will be one of the negotiating workers special interest with the other members of the board so let's say in india we have the port trust we have the dock labor boards etc so they all have worker representatives so what we understand is that effectiveness of workers representatives at the board depends upon his ability to participate in decision making and totally his knowledge of the company affairs so please understand these are some of the typical forms of labor participation now having understood different forms of labor participation let's look into something which is more systematic and that is types of labor participation when you look into types of labor participation we have to see this labor participation from different angles of employment we have to look it from the full time employment how is labor participation or what do labor participation mean to a full time employee what does actually part time employment and or how does part time employment is related to or how is part time employment related to the labor participation another critical aspect is we cannot ignore the self employed people what is the scenario what is the case or how does self employment relate to labor participation please note having a self employment or you know running a particular entrepreneurial firm or being a manager or having a firm in itself or in your name does not qualify to make a statement that you cannot have labor participation every single employment avenue every single type of uh, you know employment avenue will have a similar type of labor participation that's what we are going to discuss on the basis of employment full time employment part time employment self employment let's look into that in greater detail when you look into full time employment we we'll see that individuals engaged in full time employment especially work a standard number of hours per week let's say it would be typically 35 to 40 hours and they often receive benefits let's say benefits like health insurance benefits like paid time off or even retirement plans which we see so almost every business requires a certain number of permanent employees to ensure that these operations are run smoothly as other types of employees can join and leave the workforce regularly so full time employment should be offered critically for positions requiring commitment consistent presence and long term investment in the company so this is what we have to understand from the beginning what is your motto here why are you going for a full time employment will you go for a full time employment if the presence the consistent presence of the particular employee or the worker is not required will you go for a full time employment when the job itself is not demanding on a regular day basis will you go for a full time employment where you do not have you know consistent projects coming in and you have some deadlines and you have a consistent job that is to be done every let's say every week or fortnightly now that will not require a full time employment people may think of part time employment so the need and the requirement of the job is very much essential in underscoring what type of employment you want and based on the employment you are able to provide you have different types of labor participation so this is based on the full time employment let's look into the part 
part-time employment part. When you look into the part-time workers specifically, they contribute to the labor force by working fewer of hours than full-time employees, often on a very flexible schedule. So this form of employment provides categorically opportunities for you know work-life balance. You know people do not consider that very uh, friendly these days. Um, you know, there are people who oppose work-life balance, uh, people who ridicule work-life balance, whatever be uh, the, the final uh, notion, let me make it, uh, you know, explicit that for a healthy and productive output, for having greater efficiency and effectiveness at work, you need to have work-life balance, period. So this is what you should have in mind when you talk about work-life work balance and supplementary income. So this is specific to part-time employment. When you talk about part-time employment, let's say, for instance, retailers employ part-time workers to meet increased demand maybe during the peak season. Or such employees are paid on a pro rata basis and they may or may not receive benefits. So these are some of the criticalities associated with part-time employees. Businesses that actually need flexibility in staffing should consider part-time employees as it helps companies manage labor costs more efficiently. You can easily adapt to varying workloads if you allow part-time opportunities. So this type of employment actually provides a critical opportunity to balance work with other commitments. Let us say commitments such as education or family responsibilities. Now finally, we have a, a different type of labor participation which is essentially based on the self-employment. Now, self-employed individuals work for themselves, owning or operating businesses and undertaking entrepreneurial activities. So, they enjoy a certain level of autonomy and that's the fun, that is the risk also associated with the business. They enjoy autonomy in decision making and have essentially diverse income sources. So, when you talk about, let's say, something like self-employment, this should be that will come to your mind or this is what that comes to your mind in the first place. When you're looking into labor participation, let's understand the different vital factors that influence labor participation. Let's start with the social norms and policies, the most interesting of the lot. When you talk about social norms, social uh, aspects or social policies for that matter, cultural norms, societal expectations and government policies play a pivotal role in shaping labor participation patterns by addressing issues. It could be issues like parental leave, it could be issues like you know the child care support or even retirement age regulation. So what we understand is that social norms, specifically social norms are rules of conduct that govern interactions among individuals within a reference group. So let's say norm violations often provoke disapproval and loss of esteem, which is the force that holds them in place. Although let's say social norms exert a powerful influence on people's behavior in many arenas, they are very difficult to measure directly and are often neglected in the design of policy. So what we understand with respect to the standard policy analysis, it focuses mainly on individual responses to incentives such as prices. So if individuals, let's say, are influenced by the rules of conduct for time being let's let's take this as a hypothetical scenario if individuals are influenced by the rules of conduct within their reference group however policies must be designed to induce change at the group level so as well as at the individual level so it's not only at the group level we need change we need specific change even at the individual level so this requires a different set of tools and techniques that is not available by the conventional policy analysis. So this is what we understand when we, uh, you know, discuss more deeply on the social norms and policies vis-a-vis -vis factors influencing lab labor participation. Now, when you look into the factors influencing labor participation based on the economic conditions, we have to understand the state of economy. It could be based on job availability, it could be based on wages, it could be based on uh, the economic stability. All these factors significantly influences individuals' decisions to participate in the labor market or pursue 
alternative activities. So this is what we have to understand from economic conditions. When we are talking about economic conditions, we have to also understand about economic stability and growth. There should be a stable economic environment. That is the need of the hour. That is the need of any economy. In stable economies, what happens is that we know that companies are more likely to adopt participative management practices. So stability reduces uncertainty to a great extent and encourages long-term investments in human capital. When you talk about economic growth per se, during periods of economic growth, firms are more likely to, you know, experiment with innovative management practices. It could be, uh, you know, something like the workers' participation coming in, workers' participation management coming in as an experience or as a practice or as a test or as an experiment to enhance productivity and employee satisfaction. So, economic growth definitely will give the cushion, will give the required impetus to include programs like workers participation management and thereby get a clear picture of the WPM or the workers participation in management. When you're looking into the labor participation based on gender, what are the, the critical factors affecting gender? The, 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 the critical discussion should hover around gender disparities. Despite the progress, despite all the, all the developments, all the the talks and philosophies and discussions and deliberations on gender, gender equality. Gender disparities in labor participation persist globally and that is a fact. Factors such as, let's say, unequal pay, caregiving responsibilities and even societal norms contribute to the differing participation rates between men and women. So, income inequality, it is nothing but the high levels of economic inequality that can lead to increased demand for the worker participation management as workers seek greater influence over their working conditions and share of profits. When you look into the wage growth specifically, we see that sustained wage growth can be both a cause and effect of increased worker participation. So what we do understand is that as wage rise, workers may seek more involvement in management to sustain and enhance their economic conditions. Now these are some of the critical labor participation discussion based on gender disparities. When you talk about the impact of technology on labor participation, it evidently throws light on two important aspects clinically. One is technological advancements that, is, that, are, that we are going through and another is the specific workforce adaptation. When we talk about the technological advancements, technological innovations, you know, automation, you know, digital transformation have reshaped the work environments leading to change in the skill requirements specifically change in job structures. We have, we have discussed this extensively. Newer contracts have emerged. Different job structures have emerged. Work from uh, you know, home has been now a norm for some time. Organizational operations influencing labor participation dynamics. So this is what is relevant when it comes to the technological advancements in the area. We can look into the technological advancements from different dimensions. Let's look at for the ease of understanding. Let's look at it from the automation and AI angle. AI is the buzzword for quite some time. When we look into technological advancement from automation and AI angle, we see that uh, the nature of employment and the extent to which employees participate in decision making can be affected by technological advancement. So in certain situations, technology can provide employees with knowledge and resources they, they actually need to contribute productively to management choices. Another important factor where we can actually, you know, channelize our discussions on technological advancements apart from automation and AI would be, let's say something like digital platforms. India being one of the country that has you know, progressed extensively. In fact, I will use the word exponentially on digital platforms. You know, what we understand and see is that with the growth of remote work and digital platforms, new avenues for worker engagements are actually possible. So by utilizing this ICT or the communication technology in total, workers can actually participate in management processes from anywhere in the world. So these are the technological advancements which actually facilitate 
the labor participation. When you look into the workforce adaptation, very quickly, we'll understand that the impact of technology on labor participation necessitates continuous skills development, adaptation to new work arrangements, you know, and a revaluation of traditional employment models to align with the evolving industries is vital when you talk about the workforce adaptation. Now let's look into what is the global labor participation trends. From the trends, we try to decipher some of the, the key ideas that is you know, running across the globe from the data that is available to us. Again, uh, you know, there might be slight changes with respect to the updated data, but this will give you a glimpse of what is specifically happening. When you look into the global, global participation uh, trends, global labor participation trends, we see that you know, worker participation management processes may be impacted by the growth of multinational companies and international supply networks. So if you look into you know, businesses that have international operations may choose to actually implement these participatory management techniques from areas where employees involvement is highly valued. When you look into globalization, you will understand that when you look into economic crisis, you know, worker participation management can be aided are hindered by worldwide economic downturns. So crisis may compel actual businesses to involve employees in coming up with ideas on how to survive or they may trigger cost-cutting measures that lower employee involvement. So when you look into the regional divisions, we'll see that North America has a labor participation rate uh, which is highest at this point in time, 67%. The projected trend is something which is vital to us, stable growth due to diverse job market. Now this is what makes the labor participation also high. So let's say, I, I'll use this, this particular analogy. A leads to B, B leads to A. So what happens is that increase in labor participation rate can be considered as an antecedent of diverse job market or diverse job market similarly can be considered as, a, as an antecedent of labor participation or we see that both are a consequent in itself. When you look into uh, the second uh, region, Europe, which is having 58% lesser than North America, uh, but Asia is having a greater share. When you look at to Europe specifically, you will see that there is moderate decline in traditional sectors. There has been growth in tech and innovation. Now, this is vital because you see that, you know, traditional sectors have gone down. They have taken a, a hit. But when you look into, uh, you know, regions like Asia, which is commanding a better labor participation rate, the, the reason could be, uh, or the projected trend could be that rapid expansion driven by emerging markets and digital economy. So something like, let some countries like China, India for that matter, have gone exponentially. I've also already used this word in my previous uh, slide that, you know, when you come into the digital economy part, the Asian countries have grown exponentially. So this is what has happened in increasing the labor participation rate also in Asia. When you look into Latin America, you have 59% labor participation rate and the projected trend is that the varied trends influenced by economic reforms and urbanization. So uh, pretty much late here, when we look into the economic reforms, most of the other parts of the globe have already gone through this phase. Latin America is quite delayed in, in looking into that side. But that said, because of the economic reforms and urbanization, the labor participation rates are slowly climbing up. When you look into Africa, it is pretty low, 52%. The trend would be uneven patterns shaped by youth employment and industrial development. So this is what we understand on a global uh, scenario, on a global labor participation trend-based analysis. We see that you know, different regions have different involvement, different participation. The reasons are different, so are the future trends also. Please note, more the technology advancements, more the work adaptation towards a change in technology, you have greater participation. I would like to remind you just one thing. You know, worker participation is in management was a difficult concept to make you know, the students or general public understand the, the concept in itself. The, the relative, uh, you know, toughness or difficulty, level of difficulty was a bit high. But over the period in time, you see that as the technological advancements have happened, you will understand one fact, that because of this technological advancements, greater platforms have come into, uh, you know, space whereby you can actually 
deal with workers directly on a one to one arrangement or maybe one to many but a direct contact or a direct discussion or a direct deliberation with whomsoever you want within a company it could be a large company let's say 10000 people uh, 10 lakh people 1 crore people does not matter a real time interaction is pretty much possible today and that is the reason why workers participation management has become more effective and has become more easy when you have things going your way technology is facilitating it use the technology harness the technology if you are an employer listening to me my only request would be harness this technology there are possibilities where you can actually increase the workers participation today there there cannot be any excuse in today's world to not to you know uh, facilitate workers participation that should be the key takeaway from this class we'll come up with more details on workers participation and other related concepts in the next few classes till then take care bye bye